start our story off with a Bakugo. He's currently running frantically around the, the dorms and no one knows why. Hey guys, it's the Unsmooth Criminal. And <laughs> if you guys remembering, remember my baking uh, one shot, okay, mo most of you that have been watching my channel for a long time probably do. This is going to be my Halloween one. <laughs> I was pl originally planning this one to only be a singular one shot where, oh, I do like 10 minutes and then, yay, I'm done. But I did full hour and if you guys haven't seen the baking what if, go into my channel. I'll probably post it on my community tab when it gets, uh, when it's the day before this is going up. Because this is going to be going up on a day I do not normally post. Because the day this is going up, and I'll probably be in the premiere chat, it's my birthday! Woo! <laughs> the day I was born on this globe where you were blursed to have my existence. And I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. And... <laughs> I've been planning this the entire day. Well, I've actually been writing my book the entire day. I'm recording this the day that my book, the first chapter of my book was published. Oh, my second book. I'm still working on both books. No. Um, how should I say this? Uh, huh. Yeah. So... Bakugo's running around like it, his head was just cut off, and so he's a headless chicken. He's a chicken and his head was just cut off. That's what he's running around like. And nobody knows why. They, all Class 1A and the teachers in UA know that he has a girlfriend, but he's running around like his head was just cut off. And they're like, isn't your girlfriend's birthday coming up? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... It's actually coming up on the 31st, and they all look at him like she she was born on Halloween. And he goes, yeah, and she's not my girlfriend anymore, and he shows the ring, and they're going, oh, oh. Okay. Um, hmm. Sorry about the wind. It's really nice, the temperature's really nice outside, and I need a little bit of a breeze in my garage. So I kind of opened the bat, opened the door to the outside for my garage, and it's really windy. So yeah. Well, so they're all looking at him like, "What are you gonna get her?" And he goes, "I'm hiding her birthday." And all of a sudden, they hear a ring or knock at the door, and he knows exactly what it's for. And he goes, if anybody opens that, I'm going to kill you. The normal Bakugo phrase. And they all look at him and go, <laughs> yeah, sure. And Kirishima opens the door and goes, hello. And a sweet little smile on the other side. You see this person. And she bounds in being like, hello, delivery. And puts a box of mix and this is what she's been doing for class 1a every once in a while when she comes to visit bakugo she puts a box of basically one of her recipes and then puts another small box with a skull and crossbones on it for another student in class 1a if i remember correctly it's shoji the duplo arms guy and they all go, thank you. And she goes, no problem. And looks directly at Bakugo. And he books it. He tries running out the door when she grabs the back of his neck. And he's now like, oh god, oh god, oh god. And he's screaming for help at this point. And they're all like, what's going on? Aizawa looks at her and goes, don't worry, it's soundproof. They're all soundproof. And she goes, Thank you. And walks directly up the stairs into Bakugo's room. 
They don't see him for two days. He comes out. He looks like a mummy. Like this anime mummy. Uh, when they're like, they haven't been fed for a while. It's like, oh, I'm so hungry. But no. He looks all black and blue and other stuff. And they all walk up to him and go, dude, what happened? And he goes, my girlfriend, sadly, gets times where she's in heat. It happens always around her birthday. And guess what it is now? And they're like, around her birthday. And, she, and he goes, yeah. And it's also her favorite holiday. And she's fully clothed at this point, laying on Bakugo's floor in a ball. And someone walks by Bakugo's room and sees that she's on the floor and sees that she's basically glowing with happiness. And this is a very, very, very sleazebag dude who's a player though he slept with multiple people Kaminari walks down dude like dude I didn't know you did this every year and he goes sadly since we started dating and then Bakugo realizes what Kaminari just referenced and he goes you say a word you're dead Kaminari goes don't worry I closed your door and he goes I forgot it was open and he goes wait was she on the floor? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, crap, she's awake. And coming out, he goes, why, was she originally on your bed? And he goes, yeah, I left her on the bed. She likes laying on the floor when she's awake. Especially in this time of the year. Um, and everybody start asking Bakugo, like, what is exactly her quirk? And he goes, if I remember correctly, I told you guys last time she has a wolf mutation. And they go, yeah. If I remember correctly, I did give her a wolf mutation in the original Baker What If. And I'm. this is the same universe, same characters. This is the second year of them. So all of them have done fights. They've all gotten used to seeing uh, Izumi coming in every, like, once a month or two times a month. And he goes, since she's here now, uh, looks like she's staying for the rest of the month. And he goes, oh yeah, uh, if you have any Halloween decorations, either you go full send it, or you don't put any up. And Mina goes, oh don't worry, I go full send. And he goes, oh, at least one person does it. And Kaminari goes... What happens if you only have, like, a few decorations up? And he goes, that means she's going to spruce up your room. And Kaminari goes, goes <laughs> what do you mean spruce up my room? And Baku goes, well, they hear banging like a uh, hammer on plywood banging. They go running and they follow the banging to Kaminari's room. And it now looks like a haunted house. And Izumi's just there with a tool belt. And they all look at her going, you didn't come here with a tool belt. And she goes, didn't Bakugo tell you? He, he's a woodworker. And Bakugo goes, oh god, now they know. And she brings out some of his tools and he goes, and she goes, yeah, he's a woodworker. And he, she puts him back in his belt. And they all look at Bakugo and go, Is that why you have such an expensive looking bed? At your home? And he goes, What are you talking about? And everybody looks at Bakugo going, We know where you live. Aizawa showed us pictures of your home. And he looks just mortified that Aizawa has pictures of his home. And he goes, Izumi? And she goes, yes. And he goes, did you take Aizawa to our house? And she goes, no. He goes, then how did he get pictures? She goes, I didn't just take him. I took Nezu, All Might, well, Toshinori, that you know him now. 
All Might, uh, Midnight, Mike. I took everybody. And he goes, did you take them into my room? And she goes, no. I took them into the wood shop, though. And he goes, that's my room. She goes, no, that's the wood shop. Your room is the same room as mine. And he goes, oh, God. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And... <laughs> Aizawa pops out of nowhere and freaks everybody out except Bakugo and Izumi. And he goes, how the hell are you going to get a boat out of your basement? And Izumi goes, eh. No one knows how he gets the boats out of the basement. And Aizawa goes, wait, he has more than one? And she goes, yeah, yeah. Takes him like a year or two to finally build one when he's fully committed to the boat. Uh, his very first boat sank. Um, second boat never hit the water. Third boat. Didn't that one blow up? And he goes, don't remind me. And she goes, that one, I'm guessing, blew up. Uh, and he goes, oh, God, yes, it did. And he's now just sitting on his bed. Because he walked back to his room. And, it, and Izumi followed him, which everybody's following Izumi at this point. And she goes, and I saw that one ghost you had on your wall to show your festive spirit. And he goes, oh, crap, oh, crap, oh, crap. I thought that I took that down fast enough. And she goes, no, no, you didn't. Um, I'm sprucing up this room after. And he goes, after what? After I hit Minetta's. He goes, wait, Minetta's still here? And Minetta is just drooling at the side of Izumi. And Shoji sees this before everybody else. Takes Mineta with three of his hands, shoulder, shoulder, and leg. Takes him to the, the center with the atrium area. And kicks him out an open window. And he goes over the other room. Other, uh, a roof. And slams on the ground, getting knocked out immediately. And she goes... Oh, thank you. She's back to do that again. And I saw her goes, oh, crap, crap, I'm walking in his room. She goes, mm, no need. I'll just scratch his eyes out. And she elongates her fingernails. And Kirishima walks up to her and goes, I know this is a little bit of a private question, but what exactly is your quirk? And she's about to say it when... She says, where, and Bakugo slams his hands on her mouth and goes, we don't need to go, we don't need to say it. It's her private thing. I, I can tell you more about my quirk. And they go, we already know everything about your quirk. We know everything about everybody's quirk here, including Minetta's. And his perverted traps that he's been tr doing lately. And Izumi stops everybody, because they're walking down the stairs now. Izumi stops everybody before the stairs and looks down and cuts a wire with her fingernails, because her fingernails are super sharp. Every woman has sh freaking claws. Uh, and this entire uh, array of his hair, strings, and like arrows start flying by at really fast speed, trying to hit Chloe. And she goes, that was in the girl's uh, hey, dormitory side. And Isaiah goes, okay, that's it. Yeah, I'm finally expelling Manetta. So he calls up Nezu, he's on the phone talking to Nezu, and everybody's looking at Izumi, and Izumi goes, Bakugo, and he goes, yes, she goes, can I please tell them my quirk, and he goes, um, on your birthday, and she goes, ooh, oh, you want it then, and they all look at Bakugo, and he goes, yeah, 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 um, why not? And so they all look at him and go, 
what? And he just has an evil smirk. And she takes out a little lollipop. And he doesn't notice this, but they all notice that. And they see a skull and crossbones in front of Bakugo. And they see the inside of the wrapper that says, for when Bakugo's back. Well, not anybody. It just shows you saw that. And he starts laughing his ass off. And he goes, what level is that one? And she goes, negative 10. And she just sticks it in his mouth. And he immediately starts rolling around on the ground of how sweet it is. And she shoved it into his mouth. And I... The lollipop is defined by a stick coming out of a piece of candy that you suck on. And she cut the lollipop stick as far down as possible so he can't pull it out of his mouth. And because of how rich it is, it immediately sucked all the saliva in his mouth to try to oh, erode it away. And it got stuck to his cheek. If you guys have not had candy that gets stuck to your cheek when you start eating it, you haven't had good candy yet. Because it's not sugary enough. And it doesn't have enough uh, artificial preservatives. <laughs> but. He is dying. And she goes. If you ever need it. I'll sell them. And they go. How much? And she goes. Eh. A hundred bucks. For a lollipop. For a lollipop. And he looks freaking green in the face now. He's not actually going to throw up, but it's just the sensation of that much sugar is making him feel woozy. Three hours later of Izumi just talking with them, Bakugo finally doesn't feel woozy anymore from how much sugar she put into his system. He goes... I am never making that smile again. And she goes, you say that every time. And he goes, yeah, I know. We skip, because this is the 19th of October that they were, uh, <laughs> that they were, um, how should I say this? Uh, they were goofing off. And she came back. So this is now the 31st of October. It is Halloween night. Everybody's telling ghost stories over a fake campfire. In the middle of the rec room. And they hear a knock at the door. When Mina just said. His, when Mina gets a part in a ghost story. That says. A random knock at the door. They heard that, and yes, for ambiance, there's a thunderstorm in the background that strikes thunder right when Izumi starts knocking at the door. And since Izumi has really good hearing, she starts busting out laughing in her head. She had to, she has to stay in character. No, 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 not Mina. Bakugo is telling the story. And Bakugo says, that knock signified the arrival of a monster. And he gets further and further into the story. And they just see a blur go by the windows. Kirishima went to the door and saw nobody outside the door. And he gets further and further into the story. And they just see faint glowing blue eyes in the distance. Outside the windows. Aizawa already knows she's coming. All Might knows she's coming. Midnight knows. Nezu knows. All the teachers know. Knows. And they know that she's pulling this prank with Bakugo. They also all know her original quirk. And it helps that this Halloween, not, not actually physically Halloween, 
because I know this would be weird if it was. I haven't looked at the a calendar, so I wouldn't know, actually. It happens to be a full moon behind the storm. So he gets further and further into this ghost story, and he says, they hear a howl from outside the mansion. Howl on cue. And Baco is trying so hard not to laugh at their just scared, shitless face. And he tells the rest of the story and gets to a part where everybody was going to die. And he says, the doors just flew open from the wind. The doors were unlocked and she opened them and dashed away before the wind hit them. Because she's that fast in this uh, form. And if you guys know what I'm trying to allude to, yeah. And then he says, let's go outside and see. Let's look. And he walks to the door. They all get, a, get to the door and are in the entrance of the door. And he clicks a button on the porch and the inside of the door that he had installed. It looks like a rug now. Well, it doesn't look like a rug. It looks like the original place. But it's a rug that's on a uh, treadmill which will slowly push him outside. So they slowly get pushed outside without them knowing. And he keeps telling the story. And the ambiance keeps going and going and going. And finally, he slams the door shut. And they just see a crack of lightning at the same time. By pure coincidence. And Izumi is standing there in her werewolf form. And is just glaring at them. And they all start screaming. And Bakugo starts busting out laughing. The werewolf doesn't even stand tall for very long. It just flops on the ground and just start, or it's what sounds like laughing. And then Izumi transforms from her werewolf state into her human state, which she has uh, quirked clothes that allow her to transform. She has clothes made out of her hair that allow her to transform. So she's fully clothed and she's laughing her butt off. <laughs> Mineta's scared. Mina, after a few seconds, because she's the first one that, that notices it's Izumi, starts laughing. Aizawa finally walks out and goes, Okay. I understand why you wanted me to help with this a little, but it could have at least made me part of the story. I thought it would be fun. And she goes, Oh, don't, don't worry. We have someone else coming for a new story. So, all of a sudden, Mitsuki appears behind Izumi and gives a very, very, very sweet smile. And everybody... Including Bakugo, except for Izumi, seized a visage of the Shinigami behind them. Because mothers are scary. Yeah. Uh, so, everybody freaks out because they think that they're going to get punished because mothers are scary. And she goes, I'm here for the story. I'm here to tell the story. And... They all go, okay, whew. And Baku goes, oh god, it's time. Um, Izumi? And he points behind him and she goes, oh yeah, I forgot. And she runs in. They run up to their, to Baku's room. Izumi's not in heat anymore. She had, she was satisfied once and she's done now. Uh, <laughs> so, Baku while he's running to his room, is slowly starting to turn paler. And he has to do this every once a month. That's why Izumi comes so often. He originally disappeared once a month, overnight, and then came back. Now Izumi just visits him at the dorms. And 
And Mitsuki starts telling him a story of, about a vampire. Yes, Baku knows. His quirk is part vampire. That's why he's able to take such large explosions. Because his physical body is improved by the vampire body. And Bakugo's father, I don't remember his name, I don't even think he has a name, is the vampire. So they start t getting told the story. Bakugo and Izumi are there having fun with them. Izumi finally comes down and she immediately goes to the kitchen and starts making a meal. And they don't hear any fire from the gas stove. They don't hear any heating up from an oven. They don't even hear the microwave. And she just comes out with a stack of steaks. She doesn't care what kind of uh, cut it is. She just comes out with a stack of steaks. And another stack of rib ribs. That are fresh. That day cut out of cut out of a out of an animal fresh. So she just starts eating and eating, and they see that she's turning pinker. She looked really pale, and now she's normal pink, kind of uh, coloration. And Baku comes down, and he's perfectly fine now. And they think that he just put on a costume and she's just really hungry from being outside running around. Nah. And Bakugo starts sniffing the air. Or, because he can. Because not a lot of people are here. And he walks up to his mother and, so, and whispers something into her, her ear. And she just nods her head. And he goes, okay, let me sit down and join the story. So they start telling this cohesive story about the vampire and a lovely maiden. They finish the story. Bakugo's father shows up and he starts telling another story. And it's just a full night of ghost stories. The very next day, Nezu finally walks up to Izumi and goes, I know this is not what you want me to say to you, but I cannot let you do that again. I cannot let you cannot allow you to use your quirk again on UA campus without you being a hero. And she goes, oh, don't worry. I'm joining school this semester. And he goes, what? And she goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm joining. And I've already studied, so I'm already caught up, thanks to Bakugo. And Bakugo smiles and Nezu goes, oh, yeah. He is our straight-A student. And everybody drops what they are doing and looks at Bakugo. And goes, what? He goes, yeah, I'm a straight A student. If I wasn't, she'd be kicking my ass right now. And she goes, no, I'll just give you this little 15 cent. And he just shuts his mouth and goes, mm. So everybody is like, uh, okay. Baku is really freaking weird. I get my breeze. So Bakugo, he starts tutoring everybody because everybody starts asking him to tutor him. They all graduate high school, UA high, and go into the hero sector. Izumi has doesn't do hero work, but she is called in every once in a while as a search and rescue dog. And she hates that term, but she accept that, accepts that as her title. Because she has the nose of a bloodhound, the side of an eagle, the ears of a bat. She literally is the perfect search and rescue dog. Or just search dog. So every once in a while when there's people that are lost or... There is a tragic accident. She's called in or flown in as fast as possible. And she's used to, as or 
to check damage control. And Bakugo is known as the number two hero, Ground Zero. She's known as the rescue hero, Where. That's all she's known as, is Where. Is Where here? And she sh jumps in and goes, I'm here. And they all go, we know you don't like doing this. And she goes, yeah. Everybody who does not help me search or does not follow my orders will get a, a minus on their discount. And they all pale and go, yes, ma'am. And that's why she's so good at search and rescue is because she orders everybody around and everybody follows her orders and they get it done in a timely and orderly fashion. Even though she has to threaten them most of the time with food. Uh... And this is the end of the one shot. This was just a quick thing for Halloween. Uh, I'm planning to make a Halloween episode for another, for uh, something else. And if you guys like that, because this is going to be the one shot. This is just a quick one shot checkup thing. I don't know what I'm going to call this yet. Birthday one shot probably. Oh yeah, uh, everybody's 18 in this high school. So yeah, Izumi's now 19. It, er, Izumi's now 19. Everybody graduated at 18. Izumi's 19. And Baka is still older, so everybody's 19 already. So yeah, but hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys like this little laugh that I'm giving you. I'm going to try to get one of, one of these out for every... Or a one-shot out every uh, holiday. This is going up on my birthday instead of Halloween. But this is going to be the Halloween one-shot. Uh, I'll be in the premiere chat. So if you guys want to chat with me, you guys can. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy you guys did hit that like button if you guys uh really 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 like my content please consider subscribing um if you guys really 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 like my content please consider hitting the like button uh comment i'm most likely going to be in the premiere chat uh so i'm going to probably go let this go for another like five minutes so you guys can talk to me um i probably won't be in there immediately but i'm definitely going to be in the premiere chat Hopefully you guys enjoy. You guys did. Like button. Uh, yum. Uh, no. Uh. I'm gonna sneak a peek at the. I'm going to have you guys sneak a peek at the next one shot. Hold on. If you guys haven't read this, it's My Wife is a Demon Queen. Uh, Yeah. So I'm going to let you guys just look at this picture for a little bit and I'll be back. Talk to you guys later. I'll be in the premiere chat right back now. Right about now.
This is going to be the Christmas what if. So if you guys do enjoy my content and want and only watch my one shots, uh, this is going to be the Christmas one shot. Um, I'm going to be doing different pictures than just this one. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy. Talk to you guys later. I'll I'm I've been in Premiere Chat uh, the entire pretty much the entire video. So talk to you guys later. Bye.